Hey y'all, I haven't done a sit and talk video in a while, but I figured I'd bring it back. There's no better time than the present. If you saw the title of this video, then you know we're going to be getting into 12 ways I knew my fiance was going to be my husband. It still feels so crazy to even say that. We've been engaged for about a month now. Um, I used to love watching these videos when I was single. And so my hope is not to encourage anyone to do things my way, but just to seek God and be encouraged and maybe learn from some of my mistakes. Okay, so I wanna start by saying before he and I even got together, I was in a place personally of just feeling so reserved with my heart, like walls were up, I didn't wanna let anyone near me, but I did desire to be married. And so I was praying to God about it, just, you know, focusing on him, spending time with my word. And he was pretty much like, you know, if you want to find your husband, you're gonna have to <laughs> open your heart up to somebody. That's pretty much the only way that this is gonna work. And so I was like, okay, chewed on that for a while. But when I met Keenan, you know, I had been praying and I just felt like in that first, it sounds crazy, but like on the first day, I knew and I prayed to God about it and I just felt his yes. And I was so surprised because I just didn't think that it would happen that fast. Like I literally just opened my heart up and then here he strolls into my life. And I, I remember I asked the man of God like yesterday, you know, did you fall in love with me gradually? Did you feel like you knew right away? And he was like, I knew. <laughs> Crazy how God works. So with all of that being said, these are in no particular order, but the first way I want to share that I knew my fiance was going to be my husband is, you know, one day in our relationship, we had been courting for about a year and a half. So I want to say maybe like halfway into our courtship, um, <laughs> he just randomly one day said to me, Hey, I was praying to God about how I can show you I value you as a woman. And I'm going to pause right there. <laughs> I said, you were doing what? About what? And that was just based off like small conversations we had. It wasn't even like a big fight or like a big concern that I had in our relationship. But like he took it among himself to go into his secret place and ask our heavenly father consult with him about how he could show me that he values me as a woman I was like wow no one has ever said those words to me before and that was like a huge confirmation from God that I ask I ask God all the time give me like signs even to this day because I want to make sure I'm still I don't know if it's just me that's like this but God can give me a yes and I can still be like are you sure <laughs> so I still ask God for signs and confirmations all the time and he's so kind to continue to give those but that was a huge sign um for me it's just knowing that he prays about me and he he takes this relationship to his secret place and he seeks counsel in the best way that anybody could but even more than that that's just part of the statement he said i was praying to god about how i could show you i value you as a woman and and here's what he said and what he said came straight from the holy spirit keenan didn't even know this but um, he knew that I was in a relationship for about 10 years in the past. And what he didn't know was in that relationship, that man opened every single door for me, like car door, room door, house door, whatever, every single door. And I love that chivalry because I'm, you know, traditional and I appreciate things like that. But being as I had that and it looked so perfect on the outside by the standard of getting doors open for me, and yet and still it didn't work and I was deceived and I thought that was going to be my husband but in fact God didn't give me his yes on that and that was not my husband after I walked away from that relationship I made a private vow with God that I never told anyone about and I told God you know any relationship I'm in after this one I was single for years after that relationship but even then I was like in the future way down the line when I'm in a relationship again, I'm not going to prioritize um, getting my doors open for me because that didn't work in the past. So it was kind of like black and white thinking all or nothing. But I almost forgot that I even made that vow with God, but he didn't forget. And he provoked the man of God's heart to say that prayer and gave that answer. So I was like, whoa, 
first of all, he prays this seriously about me. And second of all, he knows the voice of God to just be like a sniper right into my heart and into those doors and those walls I built up in my heart that even I forgot about. I was like, wow. So that was one huge confirmation of just him praying and being in his secret place concerning me and then knowing that he has an accurate ear and a sensitive ear to the voice of God. So another way that I knew he would be my husband is the way that he loves his family. And this sounds so like surface level because obviously everyone wants to be with somebody that loves their family. But like on a deeper level, even though I hadn't met his family until we were already engaged, which is, you know, something that people were kind of asking me about, like, how can you know if you've never met his family? It's the way that I saw him interact with them and the stories he told me and the love in his heart toward them. Like when he would reminisce with me about his childhood and the time he spent with his siblings, like you can tell he just genuinely valued like being part of his family unit. Like the family values were there, even though it wasn't a perfect family environment, the values were instilled. And it's like the way he would literally bend over backwards and do anything for his family within his means, it lets me know he had generosity and like he didn't value money more than family. But then all of that to say yet and still, he knew how to put up boundaries and, and like be protective of himself in ways where maybe he was being taken advantage of or he wasn't being considered as a person outside of the family unit. He knew how to like pour his full love but still uphold boundaries in the family and I could see like if I married him and we ended up having our own nuclear family that like I can trust that we're going to have his family to lean on for support and love um, in our relationship and our children but when it's necessary he'll know how to put those boundaries up. The next thing was his friend group and I'm really trying to help somebody here because younger me did not take this into account at all but I want to say just from my personal experience like if you have a man that you're seriously considering marrying and he don't have no friends you should really take a look into why that is right because that was me in the past and I didn't see it as a red flag but um, actually just this last Sunday in church I will drop the link to the sermon in the description box as always but one of my pastors was preaching and he talked about actually let me pull up the scripture Hold on. okay boom Luke 1 verses 44 and 45 for behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. It was such a good sermon. Please watch it for yourself <laughs> after this video. Don't walk, but run to go watch it. It was so good. But in that message, he was saying greatness is relational. <laughs> Lord. Mary was pregnant with purpose and she had to receive that confirmation from her cousin. So like my pastor was saying, like, if you're great all by yourself, then you're actually being deceived by being conceited, right? Like a good man needs other good men around him. So that's something I learned in the past. And when we first got together, <laughs> I ear hustled what so hard to every single conversation. I heard Keenan having with his friends every single I want to hear every word coming out of their mouths I want to hear what jokes y'all are making what's what are you laughing at what are you okaying are you correcting them are they correcting you what are they doing in their free time so like he on that game he on the phone I'm listening <laughs> because I want to know if I can trust who you're around who is your circle who have you chosen to surround yourself with and that doesn't mean they have to be perfect men no not at all but like when I started to hear like some of them were like involved in their churches or like they would bring up God, they had husbands, they had children, or maybe they weren't with their children's mom anymore, but they were still being respectful. Like they weren't just making like the most coarse, disgusting locker room jokes. You know what I mean? Like when one of them was wrong, they would lift that other man up and say, you know, I love you, but you're wrong. Here's how we can do better. Or like what's going on? They would encourage each other. I was like, okay, this is a good man. <laughs> this is a good man so this is my fourth point but it's kind of backtracking to the beginning of our relationship like 
I am a person who receives dreams from God. And so on the first day that I met Keenan, actually no, it was the second day that I met him, we've spent almost every day together since we've been together. Like we have prioritized spending time together. He, he called it a client pressure. But anyways, on the second day that we spent together, which was our second day knowing each other, I remember feeling like, okay, I really like this man. I'm gonna, you know, catch feelings, but I'm so scared. Like I didn't want to open my heart back up. I wasn't ready. And these were the thoughts that were just really burdening my heart. And I went to sleep and God gave me a prophetic dream. And I, it's so vivid in my mind. Like he showed me this beautiful forest um, and it ended up being this forest that Keenan took me to on one of our first dates that's really special to him in his personal walk and he showed me that forest go from like summertime to autumn and like the leaves changing and it was like I went into like the forest from a bird's eye and it was kind of like I had an understanding in my heart that it was going inside of the man of God and like his inner landscape and God told me fall daughter and I, I woke up and I know in that dream he was telling me like I have this is the Lord speaking, like, I have checked the inside of him, and it's safe for you to fall for him. That wasn't the only dream. Like, he's given me several dreams of he and I throughout our relationship. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's confirmation. You know when it's from God and when it's not. And sometimes the enemy, because I do have a close relationship to God in my dreams, sometimes the enemy does try to attack me in my dreams and I'll make another video about how I combat that but when it's from God you know and God just gave me a bunch of dreams during our courtship that let me know like this is where he wants me to be. The fifth point was a test of the spirit that dates back to 2016 when I was in a relationship with somebody else and this person um, did not have the strongest relationship with God and I had already been baptized and was walking with God and he and I would read our Bible together but the depth wasn't there because he didn't have his own walk and so I just remember not being fully comfortable with that aspect of him and so at that point I made a vow with God privately and I said I will never marry somebody who doesn't get baptized before our wedding I am you know deep down I was like okay that's it but it would even be cool if we could get baptized together before our wedding God. Like that was like an asterisk I added on to a private vow that I made with God. I never told Keenan about that ever. Like I actually forgot I made that vow to God seven years ago. <laughs> forgot all about that. And then summer 2023 comes along and our church that at the beginning of 2023, the man of God asked me if I would follow his lead in joining the church and I agreed so we became members of the church in the beginning of the year and by summer it was time for baptism and he asked me if I would get baptized with him and at first it didn't ring a bell but then I realized like probably about a month before baptism that the day it was going to take place was out the day we first met so kind of like our anniversary because we were just like locked in from day one the day that we were going to get baptized together, that he asked me to get baptized, was the, a year to the date that we met. And it was confirmation of me testing the spirit of letting God, God letting me know who my husband would be. Because I told him, if, if even no matter what I think or how good it looks, it can't be my husband if he doesn't get baptized before we get married. And it would be even better if we got baptized together. <laughs> the sixth way that I knew my fiance would be my husband goes back to right before we got together I was in a single season just content happy being by myself I had spent a couple years just focusing on God and you know it was I started to have this desire of like you know like I said wanting to be married and I just started praying to God about the things that I would love to have in a husband like submitting them before him and saying you know strip away what's just my flesh and have your will be done but if it is your will, these are things I would love. And it was about heart posture and values. Like I just asked for like a traditional man with like Southern values, I guess is the best way I could put it. Just someone who is like old fashioned and just, you know, eager to provide. It's just devoted and nurturing, caring, someone who's gonna be a good father, a great husband, a lover of God, a servant of God, 
the head of the household like nothing fancy like don't value money because I was with somebody before that valued money and that was really damaging to me and I just didn't want anything of the sort so fast forward he sent me the man of God who had just come out of a deep growth period in his own life um, being stripped from the love of money and I remember like one of the first things I said to him when we first got together I'm talking about like first day we were texting after we hung out all day and I was like I know this sounds so crazy but I feel like God is just telling me that you're a completely different person you've learned so much and you've changed a lot and he had told me a little bit about his story and I just noticed like he just from the pictures he sent me to the man that I met like he just looked totally different and that's because God had stripped and crushed him and gave him a new oil he was a whole new person by the time that I met him I feel like that's a testimony to just not rushing God's timeline because a year before he and I met we were both different people <laughs> like we would have repelled each other like probably water and oil you know but God took his perfect time to prepare us that being said you know I found in Keenan the type of man who values purpose and like finding his purpose in life and just showing up as the best version of himself and you know being able to provide for me like if he can't contribute to me eating well every day that truly burdens him as a man like whether it's like cooking if i'm too tired to cook or just buying a meal and showing up just he cannot have it if i go to sleep hungry like it he can't sleep you know and i never had that before like i just was used to kind of taking care of myself so i we actually got in fights about that <laughs> um early in my relationship because I just didn't realize like what a burden he had to provide for me in that way and just make sure I had everything I needed you know anybody can give you a thousand dollars like anyone can buy you some Gucci shoes <laughs> anyone can get you a bag I'm sorry like that you might think like nobody's ever done that for me before but like no I promise you anyone can do that that's not what matters you know and so just like finding someone who like was delivered from materialism and the love of money and then holding these like deep traditional values to the point that it burdens him like i've seen this man be bothered because like i do a fit and didn't let him buy me dinner you know like just little things like that i have shared and testified a couple times on like different excuse me vlogs in this channel about how you know we stepped out of god's order in that we have had premarital sex and we lived together before we were married and so with that being said we entered we opened the door to let sin to enter by our actions and when we were having a hard time in our relationship and i was thinking maybe i didn't hear god right like maybe i've been wrong this whole time but maybe i should just end it too much has happened oh, jesus he's he's a keeper and thankfully like when i had a hot head and I wasn't able to see clearly for one the man of God was never willing to give up on this relationship and for two our pastor stepped in and just like had a level head for me and when I was saying like we already let sin enter we should just end this and move on find somebody new and do it right this time they focused and placed more emphasis on the redeeming power of God how he can restore sinners because he's the same yesterday today and forever and like the perfect work he can do if we let him right so with that being said like even in the hardest times in our relationship something that let me know my fiance was going to be my husband was how he shows up as my man like one example there's just you as a woman you know how your man shows up for you one example I can think of is like there are times where I may not think he's really listening or taking it in but he processes differently than me and like he really listens and applies deeply the things that I say that I need from him. He's not perfect, but he's eager to listen and to grow and to change and to just be the be the best version of himself that he can be for me. And that is so inspiring to witness, like, how could you not want to be the best version of yourself or someone who is constantly sharpening and sharpening and sharpening his own iron? It can do nothing but sharpen you back. He gets convicted by God on ways he can show up for me better. He makes plans, you know what I mean, to just be his best version of himself. So that's one way that I knew it's just like his effort that he puts forth 
in his own personal development, it sharpens me and it benefits our relationship so much. And number nine is how he handles difficult life situations. I don't know what it is. It must be the hand of God just creating a perfect work and testimony in us. I'm not going to get into it just yet because we're still going through it. But we have been through a lot as a couple, <laughs> like some not normal situations, like pressure, pressure, pressure. And that's where the oil is coming from. So I just thank God for sustaining us through everything. But how he handles, how Keaton handles difficult life situations, it's so inspiring because he is not perfect by any means. Neither am I. Like, don't ever get that impression. But he's prayerful and he's calm in the storm. And it just like, no matter what, like even if he steps to the right or to the left and he has to correct himself, it just reminds me of Jesus because it brings so much like peace to the situation. Like I could be running around like a chicken with my head come off, cut off. I'm a pretty calm person. I've been through a lot on my own, but there's just been so much pressure that's been produced in the almost two years we've been together that even I've been a little shaken sometimes. And he is just so peaceful and prayerful about things number 10 is he is so so nurturing toward me like when i'm sick or just like not feeling my best i can count on him to like help me with my physical body and that's something that i'm used to honestly with the men in my life like my bobo my grandpa on my mom's side was a medic in the navy and he was always very nurturing toward me um when i wasn't feeling well so that's something i'm used to and expected <laughs> because I was a princess like that growing up so to be able to have that same princess treatment was confirmation from God. Number 11, he is caring toward home matters. We both embrace traditional gender roles in our relationship but not to the point of idolatry or strictness so especially when I was working outside of the home or just you know sometimes life happens like he is not hesitant in any way to you know wash a dish, mop the floor, cook a meal, like vacuum do some laundry, like nothing like that so just knowing that like I want to and I desire to do all of these things for him as his woman but there's no stigma <laughs> or hesitation for him to do them for himself and that was actually something that helped us heal because when I was having doubts in our relationship and he was just reassuring me that he loves who I am as a person he one thing that helped me understand that is him stating like it's not about anything I do for him he can do all of those things for himself he's completely able and willing to do those things for himself but he just wants me so it's nice to have a man that um, doesn't have any drama around <laughs> household matters because if you're gonna be together forever there's gonna be times where one or the other needs to pick up more slack and I think that's just realistic number 12 is how he loves dogs <laughs> this might not be um, relevant for everybody but for me, it was a huge confirmation because like, I don't know, like, unless you're a dog lover, you just probably won't get it. But like, his love for dogs, I feel like he has a huge heart and there's space for everyone in his life and his heart that that shows me his posture. But then there's that other special place just for dogs. Like, <laughs> I could never get into that part of his heart, you know, because that's his love for dogs. And it's so deep. And it's so profound that it's like, it's just sweet and endearing. Like, if you don't have pets that you love, you probably wouldn't get it. But his love for dogs, like, is the sweetest thing. It just takes you back to, like, a childlike, tender place. And I just love to see it. So that's 12 ways that God confirmed to me that my fiancé was my husband. There were so many little pockets of God's smile and, you know, coincidences and happenstance and just all these things throughout a relationship that let me know but if I could sum it up these were 12 ways and I hope that it blessed you this advice and I hope that you learn from my mistakes and if you're in a similar place as me then stay prayerful and know that God is in control see you in the next one